Ravens, welcome to ONW Now. I'm Dima Matthews. And I'm Riley Kramer. In today's show, we'll take a look at ONW's Lit Mag, the importance of athletic trainers, and a look at ONW Sports. Gun violence in schools has seemed far too prevalent in the past years, especially this year. Calls for gun control in safer schools have sparked nationwide student protest. We sat down with Mr. Zook before spring break to discuss steps to make sure students feel safe at school and how the administration will handle the possibility of students walking out in protest. Rowan Stanley and Gabby Thomas have the story. With student protests sweeping the nation, Mr. Zuck and other school administrators are left to handle the possibility of a walkout at ONW. You know, I always want our kids to feel empowered. I want them to feel like they have a voice and like that voice has value. How we do that, when we do that, and why we do that, those then you get into kind of some some different areas, some different gray areas. Um, um, but I hope our kids have an idea of um, when they leave here of what their civic responsibility is um, and, and, that, that, and that their voice has value and is important. The protests are a result of school shootings, most recently in Florida and Maryland, and students want to know the school is doing everything in its power to keep them safe. You know, we really rely on students, staff, and parents to provide us information when they feel like there's something that we need to know. And I think if, if, in, if nothing else, that's the biggest piece is that if something is making uh, a student or parent or staff member uncomfortable um, or they, they see something that just doesn't sit right, um, you know, to say something um, immediately, I'd much rather follow up on stuff that was not, um, didn't really bear any fruit at the end of the day than have somebody ignore something that they think, you know, that just didn't sit well with them. How do you feel about students being able to walk out in protest of what's been happening in schools? That doesn't bother me if they want to do that. Yes, but mostly if they're actually involved in the protest, not just to get out of school. For ONW Now, this has been Roan Stanley and Gabby Thomas. The Olathe Northwest Literary Magazine is a magazine that features work from the Olathe Northwest students, allowing students to talk about themes such as courage, integrity, and equality. What can you submit? You can submit poetry, nonfiction, short stories, and more. If you want your work featured in the 2018 Lit Mag, please have it submitted before Sunday, April 8th. I think it's a good way to get your work out there. If you have something that you want other people to see or read, then that's the best way to get um, others to experience your work. And um, then also they can be inspired by your work to also create something of their own. Now let's toss it over to sports to see what's happening with Raven Athletics. Welcome back to sports. Let's take a look back at winter sports for some recaps and a glance at this season's baseball team. Now that basketball season has come to a close, let's pass it to Alyssa Clinton and Haley McCormick with a season recap after the girls' heartbreaking loss against Shawnee Mission North. The Olathe Northwest girls' basketball team had a successful season with a record of 17-5. Senior Kristen Curry reminisces back on the exciting season they had. My favorite part of this year was probably going to the Newton tournament. I got really close to a lot of the girls in the team, and it was a really good bonding experience. Even though the Lady Ravens fell short of their goal, Kaylee Kappelman is still proud of how far this team has come. Um, it was disappointing, you know, we fell short going to state in our, um, in our final game, but, you know, gave it her all against all the adversity and, um, in that game, and, you know, it's all we can ask. So we came together and we gave it our best shot. So. Although both seniors are sad to go, they have high hopes for the team next year. The advice I would give to the returning players is that in order for your team to be successful, you really have to build a foundation of like friendship and have be close-knit with your teammates, and it makes it a lot more fun to play the game and come together. My advice for next season, season will just be, um, we, with, our seat, with four seniors leaving, and we all played a very big role in the success of our team, you know, there's a lot of um, people that are going to have to step up next year and fulfill those goals for them to be as successful. For Haley McCormick, this has been Alyssa Clinton. Now back to game day. After a tough loss against the Late the East to end the boys' season, Nick Lopez and I put together a season recap. Senior, number 11, Jackson, Nick After losing the Substate Championship, Kyle Sheever reflects on his final season as a Raven. Um, I mean, I thought it went really well, except for uh, we didn't get to make it back to state this year. Um, 
all the guys stayed close through the whole season. The record showed that. So yeah, I thought it was a productive season. His heartbreaks of the season was the loss to await the West. Sheaver explains the disappointment of that defeat. Um, I'd have to say kind of just letting down the school in the sense of they pictured that game as like the biggest game of the year. And uh, so the hype for it was all up there and then it just kind of slipped away. Although eight seniors are graduating this year, Sheaver has high hopes for the future of the program. D will really be able to take charge along with uh, JL, him, uh, his hard work and uh, dedication to like defense and stuff like that. I think he's really going to step up, and Dee's just a playmaker and a leader, so I think that's going to really uh, benefit our school next year. The Raven Bowlers qualified for state for the first time and finished eighth as a team this year. Let's roll it, roll it over to Jared Coker. The Raven Bowling team just wrapped up a successful season. The boys team accomplished something that hadn't been done in years. The boys took eighth overall at state, with Cameron Kotwitz taking 14th for the boys and Malia Smotherman taking ninth for the girls. So the season this year has been awesome. At the beginning, I didn't think we were going to make it as far as we did, but um, once we won the city meet, I really liked our chances. I saw what we could do, and um, I think we just just got really fortunate during the regional meet. We all performed and we were able to make it. The odds for success appear high for next season as well. Um, if we keep it up, then I'm pretty sure the boys have enough confidence to make it to state and some of the girls too. So my goals for next year, definitely the same as this year, making it to state, getting even higher, winning state, maybe top 10 since I finished in top 20, but maybe finish top 10 next year or the team getting first, second or third place, getting a trophy, bringing it back to the school in a while. I think that would be pretty cool. For Game Day Northwest, this has been Landon Daniel. Stay classy, Ravens. To kick off spring sports, the baseball team played their first games this past Tuesday at Seaback. The boys fought hard, but unfortunately lost to Bitch of the Age 9-6. Next Saturday, the boys will play two games at Crowder Community College starting at 12-4. and four. That wraps up sports this week. We will see you next time with coverage of more spring sports. Also, tune in on Friday for the next episode of Raven Roundup. Now, back to the news. Though you may have not have heard about it yet, every March is National Athletic Training Month, held in light to shine on the work that athletic trainers do for both students and professional athletes. This year's slogan is Compassionate Care for All. Jacob Guernsey and Jacob Kaufman caught up with our athletic trainer here at ONW, Steve Hawkins, to find out more about his job and what this month really means to him. It means a lot because it puts the spotlight on athletic trainers and highlights the things that we do in the various job settings that we work at. For example, I work at a high school. Uh, so there's lots of different areas that athletic trainers work in. And by having National Athletic Training Month, if people take just a little bit of time, uh, they can show where they work and what they do. And so there's a variety of settings that we can get exposure from things like that. Yesterday, March 21st, a group of 4th and 5th graders from Ridgeview Elementary visited our school to learn about the academies we have here at Olathe Northwest. They toured the Ecom and Engineering Academy spaces and learned how both programs run and why they should apply. We brought our kids to see the 21st Century Academies because we wanted them to have an idea about their options for their future. Um, our kids hear about jobs but they don't really understand what there is and they have no idea about the spectrum of professions available to them. So we wanted to get them involved and see what is offered at the high school so they have kind of a, they can make a plan for their futures and see how hard they need to work and explore their interests in our classrooms and hopefully connect them to their, what they're eventually going to do. That's all for this week's edition of ONW Now Ravens. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at ONW underscore Raven Daily and on Snapchat at ONW Now. For the Raven Daily, this has been Riley Kramer and Demma Matthews. Don't forget to catch tomorrow's episode of the Raven Minute, and we'll see you next week for ONW Now. <laughs>